Today on the podcast, we are talking relationships part three, and uh, today we're talking about probably the uh, juiciest topic of them all, situational relationships. Frame my name podcast. We're going to jump in and get started right about now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fan Money Podcast. It's your boy Simba with Nebai Jr., aka TK. Lock my man Omar Will. We call him O and Denise Obi. We call her D Nice. Y'all say what's up to the peeps. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, good people? It's a, how y'all feel? another lovely Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. And uh, y'all know how we do. We jump right in and get things started. But before we do that, it is Affirmation Wednesday, and we get our affirmations in and out the way. So if you got them written down, memorized, or whatever you got going on, let's get through these, get your day started. And whatever day you get the replay of this, whether it's audio, video, or whatever, it's affirmation that day, morning, noon, night, throughout the night, midnight, whatever. Are you ready? Let's get it popping. Today will be a good day. Today will be. A great day. Today will be an awesome day. Today will be an amazing day. Today will be a phenomenal day. Today will be stress free. Today will be a stress less day. Today, I will overcome all barriers that want to block my progress. Today, All circumstances, issues, and situations will work in my favor. Today, all things will line up for my good. Today, I'll become better than who and what I was yesterday. I am a go-getter. I am victorious. I am triumphant. I am an overcomer. I never lose. I either win or I learn. I take authority over this day. I will dominate this day. I will conquer this day. And everything I have spoken into this day will happen as I have affirmed, because I am more than a conqueror. Let's get it popping. So if you've been with us for the past two episodes, we have been talking about relationships and uh, and our uh, first part of the series, we talked about just uh, relationships from the standpoint of it being uh, the different forms of relationships. And those were platonic, romantic, uh, codependent, uh, casual, open, and toxic relationships. And all those forms of relationships can affect different types of relationships, such as family, friendships, acquaintances you know, romance, you know, sexual, work, and situational. And uh, we talked about the first three uh, in in part one of the series, platonic, romantic, and codependent. And then in uh, part two, we talked more about the casual, open, and toxic relationship. If you want to get more on those, go back to the last two uh, podcasts and get those because it's going to lead you up to today's podcast, which is... We're talking about situation ships, situation ships. Now, before we even jump into this, I have to be honest, I had not heard about this particular relationship until about probably a month ago. And I was just looking through some things of relationships. I'm like, huh, something you should probably talk about. And then I started looking at what a situation ship was and i'm like what is this and what does all this entail so let's jump right into what a situation ship is or aka a situational relationship all right so let's define this real quick so it's it's defined in 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 many ways and there's you know if you look 
up, look it up, say in another dictionary online, something like that, it may say something different. But we'll define it as this. It is a relationship without any commitment whatsoever. A relationship without any commitment whatsoever. Uh, If anyone were to ask someone, hey, what's up with you and -and so-and-so, they might answer like this. It's complicated. That's what they probably would say. It's complicated. It allows individuals to experience, this is what it is, it allows individuals to experience the benefits of both being in a relationship and being single simultaneously. That is a bunch of mess. How do you experience being in a relationship and single at the same time, a.k.a. a situational relationship. So we're going to jump right into these characteristics because this is going to get interesting because this is this kind of blew my mind when I saw this. I'm like, this this sounds like something else. And when I first read or I first heard of the term situationship, I was like, the first thing that came to my mind, I'm being honest, and you guys can jump in on this too if you want to. First thing that came to my mind was like an arranged marriage or like an, or like an arranged situation where it's like, hey, you know, little Johnny's born, little Susie's born. Hey, let's just arrange for them to get married when they get older. You know, we're, like, we're good family friends. Let's have just, let's create the situation for our children to get married. Or in different cultures, you have that your spouse is picked out for you. You don't pick your spouse. That's what I thought initially. Then when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is nothing like that whatsoever. What were you guys' reactions when you first saw the term or word situationship? You can go, Denise. You can go, Denise. You can go? All right. <laughs> so it's actually, I knew it was, had to be something confusing. And especially in the my generation now where I'm in my late 20s, this is very common situationship. So. It wasn't, I. It wasn't like it was eye opening, but it wasn't shocking for me because I'm like, okay, I know a few people my, I know around me that are have been in situationships and they're like, all right, this is toxic. I got to get out of it, and that's kind of what I see in the media a lot, and it's kind of almost glorified in a way. So, it wasn't anything new, but it was shocking to hear how common it is. So that's my take. Oh, what about you? Yeah, my take was it. So as I looked at it, like I said, it's a fairly new term that I'm hearing. Um, And I guess it is with this new generation. So I'm looking at it and (laughs) saying, uh, I guess it means you get all the perks of a relationship without the responsibility of one. So it's like I could, (laughs) I get what they say. You can get the milk without buying the cow. (laughs) <laughs> or you can have me, or you can have your cake and eat it too. Or you can have your cake right. and eat it too. So it's like I can get all the right. cake I want without, you know, any like it's like without no commitment or whatever. Um, it sounded crazy, but again, times are changing. Maybe this is how this generation is finding their one. But I, it seems a little toxic to me. Um, it it, it doesn't look yeah. like it's a great idea to try to find the one, right? Because before you know it, you'll yeah. look up 10 years later and you didn't have eight situationships. <laughs> 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 and in your mind, you're like, I didn't date anybody. Why not? Right. Oh, I had situationships. Well, you're eight people in. Yeah. And, you know, that can't possibly be a good look. I could, I say, I can give you like a meter on where a situationship falls in the category. So you have your friends with benefits. And then you have a relationship. A situation is like right in the middle of that. That's the easiest way I can explain it to you. It sounds a mess. Right, exactly what right. it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest, like once I saw the actual word, my immediate thought was this can't be something that's good for you. But I also said, hey, let me give it a benefit of the doubt. And let's just let me let me try to think of what this could be positively 
And I tried that and I failed. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's jump into these characteristics because these are going to be interesting. So the, the, the first characteristic that comes to mind when you talk about a situationship is that it's undefined. The relationship, it's undefined. There's no set expectations. There's no set boundaries. Uh, it's like, you know, what are we? We don't know what we are. We're just doing whatever. And there's no defined relationship. It's just kind of just there. Okay. Another characteristic is there's no consistency in the relationship. You know, it's like, when's the next time we're going to see this person? I don't know. It could be a year from now. Who knows? How long will it take them to respond to me? You know, if I text them or if I give them a phone call, like, I don't know. Again, undefined. You know, how will they make an effort to reach out to me? I don't know. Again, undefined. There's no consistency. Now, the, the consistency may be the fact that they may not necessarily do these things or it could just fluctuate. You know, I remember if any of you watch uh, ESPN's first take, Stephen A. Smith always gives his A list of teams. And his favorite word is, it's fluid. It's fluid. It's fluid. That's kind of what this is. It's, like, it's, it's just fluid. It's just kind of, it could change at any, any given moment. And it's like, kind of like there's no rules. Characteristic number three, there's no talk about the future. No talk about the future. It's just, and that, that's short-term or long-term. There's no talk about it whatsoever. No planning, no scheduling, no arranging. No, nothing. It's just left in limbo, just there. Then the fourth one we have for this first half is it's superficial. It's superficial. So though you may spend time with this person, you know, and and may even be intimate and not just, you know, you spend time together, like you go out bowling and you go have eat and you go to movies and whatever you do, it could possibly be intimate but there's no emotional connection whatsoever or affection for that matter. It's just kind of like to a degree it's like, you know what? I feel like having chocolate today. I'm going to call so-and-so. I feel like having vanilla today. I'm going to go call so-and-so. It's like, it's, it's kind of how, whatever you feel that day, or however you feel that week, that's what you, that, that's who you kind of want right. to talk to or be with. There's no personal questions or matters that are brought up or discussed. Everything is just real surface. There's no connection emotionally, deep connection, no personal talk. It's just, we just doing whatever. And it's kind of like, you know, how many, any of you, I guess all, you guys have seen the Emoji movie, right? The Emoji movie? No. Yeah. And remember the, oh, you, you haven't. Know. Denise, you haven't seen the Emoji no. movie? Oh, you are so fine. I, I don't have any kids. I don't have any kids yet. So I'll certainly right. have no kids. Oh. So, yeah. it's, like, oh. it's kind of like a it's 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 a kid movie, but uh it, it's listen. A lot of these cartoon movies now they give some some adult lessons too. Let me tell you that. So the emoji movie is so it's just for the niece, and I'm not going to give away. So you have to, now you have to rent it and watch it or do something Netflix it, whatever you want to need to do. So the emoji movie, it's about literally the emojis we have on our phones. And the emojis live inside of the phone. And they have their 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 emotions and all that stuff. And so this one emoji, uh, him and his parents, they are the meh emojis. That's kind of like what a situation ship is. It's meh. Meh. You know, it's complicated. It's it's meh. It's what it is. And so it, it's it's kind of, there's a lot that can go into this. And we're going to talk about this in the second half. But from what we've talked about so far, it being undefined, no consistency, no future is talked about, and it being superficial. What do you guys think about those first four characteristics about a situation ship thus far? Does it kind of describe it to a degree of what we kind of thought it was or what we've been talking about? Yeah, it definitely does. And it's like it's there's no boundaries or structure. There's no there's no uh I guess for lack of a better way to put it, there's no game rules. It's like you're just playing with no rules. Imagine playing a basketball game or 
a football game and you could do whatever you want to do. <laughs> no, you just messed me up. All bets are off. You just like, messed me up with that one. You can, <laughs> you can hack. You can, you can push them if they're shooting the ball. You know, just, just how you feel. It's a situation, right? <laughs> There's no out of there's no out of bounds line. There's no boundary line. Like, it's Bound. like you can coach and play and cheer at the same time. Like, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so referee. Just, yeah. Goodness. Got you. Got you. Denise, I'm you got saying, anything else? Just, on this that is one? toxic. There's no pretty way of putting it. It's toxic because yeah. in the end, yeah. somebody's going to get hurt, whether it's male or the female. And, and, and we're going to look into that in the second half of the show because. Uh, the characteristics, the characteristics get a little more um, fluid, should I say, okay, <laughs> as we go through these last few. So we'll take a little break. We'll come back, talk a little more about the last few characteristics, and then we're going to have a general conversation just about what uh, situation ships kind of brings to the table for um, those who uh, choose to or, in, or, or are involved in a relationship as such, Frame Money Podcast will be right back. Are you looking for an apparel company that's positive, uplifting, and truly cares about you? Then look no further. Frame of Mind Inc., an apparel brand company, impresses on individuals to think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. Get positive apparel, such as t-shirts, hoodies, and wristbands for children, teens, and adults in various colors and sizes. Customized services include logo and t-shirt design, screen printing for individuals, families, schools, profit and nonprofit organizations. You can reach Frame of Mind Inc. at 302-689-3499 or visit their website at www.frameofmindinc.com. Frame of Mind Inc. Think it. Speak it. Achieve it. All right, we are back for the second half of our part three of our three-part series on relationships. And when we left, we're talking about uh, some characteristics of a situationship. And those were, number one, it's undefined. Number two, there's no consistency. Number three, there's no talk about the future. And number four, it's superficial. So we've got three more characteristics left. Um, that that we've kind of found here on situationships, aka a situational relationship. And uh, the next characteristic is it's conventional, or should I say, it's based on convenience. It's spur of the moment, or if you have you know like a gap in your schedule, it's like oh you know what I got some time, let me let me hit up so and so, see what they're doing, you know, or you know. Everything else has failed. All your plans are falling through and you've kind of defaulted to so-and-so. So it's like, you know what? You know, everything else fell through. Nothing else worked. Let me give so-and-so a call. That sounds kind of wrong, but, you know, that's that's what happens in these kind of relationships. You know, all my other plans didn't work out. I guess I'll just call you. This sounds more and more to me like an open or a casual relationship, if you ask me. Now, it could be in the middle of that open and casual, but it sounds a lot like an open or casual relationship. Now, I, I, I will say this, and I'm, go- I'm going to put myself on blast, okay? Because, you know, we, people like to hear that we have some relevance to the situation. I will have to say, there have been times in my past, before I got married, okay? Make that very clear, before I got married, I'm not saying it was right, but before I got married, where I could see myself in either a situationship or a casual one, never an open one, never an open one, but a casual one. I could, I could see my, if I, if I think, you know, hard enough, I could see that that happened maybe in high school, possibly college. Um, after that, it was kind of like, all right, I'm kind of really looking for my wife now, you know, and, and and I'm not saying that being in high school and college is the thing you should do, but again, you know, you're kind of experimenting. You don't really know what this is all about. You're kind of doing your own thing. Your parents say one thing, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do what I want to do without really getting into hard trouble. You know what I mean? And so 
I can see myself kind of in that conventional characteristic, you know, when it comes to a quote unquote relationship or something that's just kind of like we're just going with the flow or whatever. So, you know, I can relate to that. Okay. I don't know if any of you can, but I can relate to that as well. Another characteristic is it's not exclusive. And pretty much it's, it's like, you know, any and everything goes with or without you. You know, whether I'm with you or not, anything goes pretty much. And again, to me, this sounds more and more like an open or a casual relationship. <laughs> so, you know, that is, is again, this is just me is what it sounds like. Then finally, we have the last characteristic is there's not much or any follow up. Why? Because you're not committed to anybody. You're just doing you to a large degree. And as long as it's conventional for you or it's convenient, you're good. Now, with this non follow up, it's like, you know, the person, you know, appears to be, you know, all, you know, all together with it, but then behind closed doors, like in public, you appear to be in a relationship. But behind closed doors, when you're apart, it's like, nah, it's not really like that. You're putting on this facade for some reason, for whatever reason you're doing it for, you know. And more than that, one person tends to keep the other hanging. Why? Because as Denise said before, eventually someone's going to start catching feelings. And then when all else fails, eventually it can and possibly will become toxic. What do you guys have to say about that? Mm. Mm. What about you, Al? <laughs> hmm. That's good info. Probably not. We'll get <clears throat> or 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 not, <laughs> depending on what kind of relationship that book is. <laughs> 
But getting back to your point, or you said that, you know, it, it kind of pushed you to your wife. I'm sitting here thinking, like, you know what? It could happen. It could happen. But the likelihood of it happening is probably more than not. Now, again, it just depends on the person, you know, what their what their maturity level is, what they're really looking for. I think, too, you know, for me personally, um, it was kind of just me. It was like it, it means a kind of experience. And it's like, you know, let me see like what's out here, because, you know, I really haven't haven't done this yet. You know, and if, for me, it was it almost became like a popularity thing. Like I was very popular in high school. It's kind of like, all right. I can kind of like pick and choose, you know what I mean? But it was like, at the same time, I knew what I was doing wasn't right. <laughs> I knew that. But it's kind of like, hey, I guess I can have fun with this. But when you start looking at the damage it can cause, you start and then you start, you're like, do I really want that kind of reputation? And I really didn't, you know? And so... Um, like O said, you know, if you're in one, you know, it's 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 good to that person's probably not that into you. They, they probably are, but it's they're into you because of the benefits they get out of it from you. They're not really into you, per se. That's what I say. So, um, go ahead, Denise. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And I think you recognize that that you didn't want it to be you. You know? So good for you. Good for you. Now, here's the thing. It, it's 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 almost hard to end on a good note with this because number one, let's be honest, we don't have any positives to tell you out there who are listening how to deal with a situation. Like our best advice for us is you might not want to be a part of one because it's likely not going to end very well. But what I found is that in, in the research that I did, it's like they had these pros and cons to a situationship. And I'm like, how are there pros and cons to a situationship? I don't understand that. Like, yes, there are pros and cons to everything, but it's kind of like they were kind of like justifying, like, this is what you can get out of it. And then here are the cons. And I'm like, the cons, like, they sound great. I'm sorry, the pros sound great, but the cons sound detrimental. Like, why would I want to take that chance with the detrimental con with all these pros that that make it sound wonderful? Because once you get in too deep, like, it's kind of too late, you know? And so we can't give you guys any pros and cons here. Uh, we'll, we'll just be honest. I, mean, I strongly do feel we'd be doing our listeners a disservice by listing these pros and cons of what a situational ship would do in a positive way to benefit you. I'm sorry, we're just not going to do that. All right. We are going to talk about, you know, what the what it is and what it all entails. But, you know, this is the Fair Money Podcast. We're talking about positive outcomes, not negative ones. So we're not going to give you pros and cons. But what I will say is this. I did find this very interesting. And this is the article that I read. It was by uh, Very Well Mind, which is a, a site that had this article on it. We'll post it in the information. You guys can go to and look at it, check it out if you want to. And a part of the article said this. because uh situationships are superficial the partner wanting more usually does not know the other person well which causes them to idealize their partner and devalue themselves people who reportedly find themselves in these types of relationships tend to struggle with self-worth and usually find themselves being attracted to partners who make them feel they must earn love. It's 
So um, before we go, we told you guys last week that we had um, the particular product on sale in our online store. And if you look at have the video portion, as you can see, I have the Be Constructive, Not Destructive hoodie on today. Last week I had the T-shirt. I got the hoodie on today. You guys can go to our website. You guys can uh, get that. You can also get the T-shirt, the long sleeve, or the hoodie uh, between uh, today, Wednesday, and through Saturday. Uh, you type in the uh, word constructive as your code, and you'll receive a um, nice discount on those on that particular product between now and Saturday. So make sure when you go uh, purchase that, you type in the word constructive to get your discount. And uh, you can get, again, the hoodie, the long sleeve tee, or the short sleeve. We've got green, black, and brown. And um, put some positive wear to help you out. And uh, again, if you're in a situation ship, don't be destructive. Be constructive. Get out. Just saying. Kind of fit the topic. That's all I'm saying. So, all of us at the Frame of Mind 8 podcast, continue to think it, speak it, and achieve it. And until next time, myself, Denise, and O, we holla. Thank you for joining the Frame of Mind Inc. podcast. And as always, here at Frame of Mind Inc., think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. As our tagline says, think it, speak it, achieve it. See you next time. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.frameofmindinc.com where you can browse our online apparel store, listen to some of our original music and production services, as well as view our videos and projects we've done for our clients and customers.